Okay, welcome to the video. So this is the final video in my series on auto-tuning and uh, I've done all the rest out in the field and showing what I'm doing and trying to sort of give some feel of how the auto-tune is working but uh, obviously this all comes down to the parameters and so uh, I just wanted to walk through um, the parameters that I ended up with for this this copter Chimera 7 and uh, just to sort of remind you a few of the things that, that I did okay so uh, it, here is the extended tuning panel in Mission Planner so this is kind of where you get a good overview of the tune that you've got in the extended tuning panel and uh, if you remember from the other videos I was looking at these values of angle P so this is um, uh, yeah, the angle control of P gain for roll, pitch, and yaw. And uh, the maximum that Autotune will ever give you is 36, uh, and that's a 10% back off from 40. And so, you know, if you see 36, that just means it couldn't go any higher. Um, but uh, given that the defaults are 4.5, you know, these, these values are way, way higher. And um, you don't need to get that high and in fact you might want to back these off uh, certainly for bigger copters but it's, it gives you an indication of how good the tune is because if uh, if there's a lot of noise then angle P will be much much lower and if the tune gives you anything lower than 4.5 that's in, an indication that a noise is a real problem so I would say anything over about 10 is probably okay for copters um, with this particular one I'm trying to get very high angle P because I want uh, good um, angle control. So here I've got 30 on roll, 25 on pitch, 36 on yaw uh, and I think the other um, uh, it, it, this is this is quite common for roll to be a bit higher than pitch so um, uh, I think sometimes this is due to the sort of length of the copter and I've probably got it here length, length of the copter and, and going that way versus going that way uh, so usually it's possible to get a very tight tune on roll and maybe a pitch a bit less obviously for these much squarer copters they're very similar and uh, these values here you can see in the full parameter list and they're all under ATC for attitude control rate rat and then uh, um, sorry not rat <laughs> it's not the rate controller it's the angle controller so ATC underscore ang and we've got pit p roll p and your p so you can see 25 30 and 36 so that's where it shows up in the in the full parameter list um, so uh, the next thing to notice is the accelerations that uh, it comes up with so these are uh, you can see these I think these are in centi-degrees um, and so uh, this is 405,000 this is 301,000 this is 213,000 um, and I think the defaults for these are well we can have a look go to the parameter list so these are um, ATC these are the Excel values so you can see that the defaults are 110,000 so we've got three times that 110,000 four times that 27,000 so we've got almost getting on for ten times that or eight times that so centi degrees a second um, and these are set by auto tune they're basically the, 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 the most that your copter was able to do when the tune when you uh, executed the tune there's no point in changing these because it's it just it's a, just a reflection of the tune um, but again higher numbers indicate a, a tighter tune and noise is the main reason that these will um, go down obviously but also large copters uh, and then uh, I talked about the filter setup so um, you can see here that as so on if you look at the gyro 
my gyro rays, uh, which is hiding down, hiding somewhere. Don't see it. Oh, here we go. Basic filters, gyro, it's 150. So you can see Excel can just be 10, doesn't need to be very high. Gyro, um, you can push it higher if you've got good noise filtering. And um, I, it, it, if you don't have good noise filtering, then uh, yeah, this is a good way of burning your motors. So you have to be careful with this number. And I think for smaller copters, a value of 80 gyro, 40 filt D on roll and pitch, and 20 filt D on yaw is a good place to start. On a larger copter, then you might want to have 40 gyro, 20, 20, 10. Um, and that's a good place to start. And actually, you can get a very reasonable tune with those values uh, without sort of too much danger to your copter. Um, but then if you want to really kind of push things, you want to, that's why you want to sort of crank up the gyro. And uh, I think one of the things to note here is that um, I, hadn't, I did another video on frame resonance, but I hadn't sort of dealt with it here in Autotune. But uh, frame resonance can f have a big impact here. And so although the notch setup for the yes, the motors is really important. The notch setup for frame resonance, if you're going to address it, is important. And frame resonance is often the thing that will stop the gyro going any higher. So on this copter, I think the frame resonance is about, I have a feeling it's something like 130 hertz or something like that. So before I effectively address the frame resonance, I couldn't push the gyro up because I was just exposed to all this noise from the frame. Um, with the frame resonance squashed with the second harmonic notch, then I was able to push up the gyro. And then you can see that the filt Ds are half of the gyro, and that's a reasonable rule of thumb. Um, and then, as I said in the video, filt D for your quarter of, of uh, well, it should be 37 and a half, but uh, generally you can filter your quite hard. Um, and then the other thing I did on this tune, as it was, I simply set filt E to 2.2 and then did a your D tune. And you can see the your D value came out at 0 0.006, which seems reasonable. And the, you know, it's, it's, it's D plus the P and I that you, or P that you can then get on top of that, that gives the really tight, so uh, your tune. So, um, yeah. So if I look at those just in full parameter list, ATC rate, rate controllers, so roll, roll, we've got, um, uh, you can see fill D here, rate roll fill D, rate roll D, rate roll P, uh, and um, <laughs> got some experimental settings here, that's, uh, uh, that's Good fun stuff for a later date, uh, and um, uh, yeah, similarly on pitch, uh, and then similarly on your rate, your there. So yeah. So that's the setup, and then a reminder of what I did for auto tune. So there isn't an auto tune page, which is so you have to do you have to set auto tune parameters using the full parameter list. But fortunately, they all start with auto tune underscore. And so this is the aggressiveness value, um, and 0.075 means seven and a half percent, and uh, 0.1 is the default, which is ten percent, which is okay for noisy builds, but for these very low noise builds very clean builds, um, this, this is too too much. Uh, so uh, if you remember, I set this aggressiveness value to 7.5% for roll and pitch, and then I set it, and, and actually I 7.5% for your E, but then I reduced it to 5% for your D because um, your is such a strong axis. 
and then the axes you you do the axes uh, via this parameter but uh, you just got to remember this is a bit field so um, uh, so bit zero the number one is roll bit one which is this sort of base two bit one the number two is pitch bit three the number four is your and then bit uh, four the number eight is your D so if I wanted to do all of them together I would have to add those all together so that would be 15 would, would be setting all of the axes but generally you want to uh, tune roll and pitch first and get something decent there before um, going on to tune your so uh, three sets roll and pitch one plus two uh, your D on its own would be 8, um, your E on its own would be 4, um, so yeah. And then the other thing to notice is this min D term, so on smaller copters, so the default is 0 0.001 and on smaller copters that's not small enough, so actually these small high powered copters tend to have quite low D values. Um, and 0 0.001 is too big and so I tend to set this to 0 0.0003 uh, and that seems to be a good compromise. Um, the, the thing to note though is if, if your D goes down to the minimum value back here, so in, in a couple of tunes I saw your D go, in, go to point on this type 1.0001 so basically gone to minimum D which basically means it wasn't tuning at all and I think that the conclusion I've come to is that your D in particular is very very noise sensitive so if you try and tune your D with in sort of less than ideal conditions and with too much wind it's just not going to work um, now you can kind of make it work by reducing filter E, that's another thing I found, is you sort of can aggressively filter the error term and then that allows you to tune up your D but it won't be as tight uh, as before. And then the other thing the other thing to notice, or the thing to be just a little bit careful of is um, your D often needs to start from somewhere so if this value is zero it I, I've seen a couple of occasions where when you try and tune it with of uh, starting from a zero value, it never it never completes. All right, so uh, that is um, the auto tune setup, and uh, uh, I I generally can do m many auto tunes. And what, one of the things you find about auto tune is that the uh, the more noise there is and the further out your tune is, the longer it takes to complete. So if you've got a low noise build and it's reasonably well tuned, auto tune will complete very, very quickly indeed. And so you can actually, once you sort of dialed in the tune, you can redo this and it sort of play with it a bit, play with the filter settings a bit, use angle P as a sort of indication about how good the tune is. Um, and uh, uh, do, do, it, do it that way. So if auto-tune takes ages to complete then you just got to it, you, you clearly got noise in the in the system note that your E often takes longer as does your D roll and pitch tune up a bit, a bit more uh, easily and then you can see here that I've got auto-tune on a switch so on RC10 so I was just uh, enabling auto-tune and a reminder that you've got to stay in the same mode that you started auto-tune in when you disarm for the parameters to be saved. So I, I tend to auto-tune in loiter these days, seems to work pretty well. Um, I think for purists you would do all hold, but it never seems to be uh, um, calm <laughs> enough for that to work well. I don't have a big enough space. So loiter works well. Um, you've got, you engage auto-tune. Uh, and um, when it completes make sure you land without switching out of auto-tune or the mode that, that you're in. 
So the other, the other problem that people sometimes run into with auto-tune is it never starting. And so one of the things you've got to be careful about is, let's go here, MOT. So the, the hover thrust. So the hover thrust basically um, is what determines what the mid-stick on the throttle is. And if this is wrong, Basically, auto-tune is looking for mid-stick on the throttle. And if your hover thrust is wrong, then you will never get to mid-stick and auto-tune will never start. So that's one, one problem I've come across. Um, the good news is that this is learned automatically using the default settings. So just make sure that you've done some good hovering to learn the, the, the correct value. Um, but it's worth noting that sometimes you have to play with the throttle a little bit just to find the the hover the mid mid uh, midpoint that it's looking for because uh, often with sort of Excel and gyro buses the thing can sort of go up and down and and uh, it's not mid stick where where, um, where auto tune is looking for and then the other thing is you get this area about uh, failed to level and. Basically, that means noise, whether it's noise in the system or you're flying on too windy a day. Um, now, in the video, I was actually able to complete a tune with a reasonable amount of wind, but uh, I still got a few of those errors and much better when I, I'd sort of taken those out. So those are all the auto-tune parameters. And then I think what I might just do is pull up a log just to show you what's going on. Okay, so I just pulled up a log here from my camera. Uh, and this is after I've done the tune, I was just gonna show you some of the things I'm just looking for. Obviously, looking at the log is a bit more involved for evaluating the tune, and often you can tell some significant things just by the values that were determined. But this is, so once you've what got what you think is a good tune, this is a sort of good place to start. And uh, the key is in these rate parameters that I've looked at before. Um, and in particular, you want, you really want fast attitude log logging to, to um, uh, evaluate this effectively. So fast attitude logging is easy to remember. If in the log bit mask, you basically need to enable the lowest bit. So basically log bit must, must be a, a, an odd number. So basically if it's an even number, add one to it and you'll have fast attitude logging enabled. If it's already an odd number, then you're, you're good to go. Uh, but fast attitude logging takes up a lot of space. So just be aware of that, especially if you're logging to a, a flash, um, uh, uh, flash chip. So what I'm going to do is log, and I've done this before in other videos, P out, R out, Y out, and um, uh, A out, which essentially gives you uh, a measurement of throttle, effectively. And you can see in this log that on the throttle, I pushed it quite high, so I got to is in stabilized, got to 55% of throttle and 33% of throttle, but most of the time I'm hovering down here somewhere at 10-12% 10, 10, of throttle. And what you can see is, what you're looking for is these rate outputs. And if we sort of dial in here a little bit, what you want is for these to be below 10%, which is 0.1. And so you can kind of see that it's it's sneaking up a little bit of the time, but mostly it's below 0.1. But the interesting thing to see is that the problems, if there are problems, are all on pitch. So if you look at um, if you look at here, I'm getting a big pitch oscillation. Can you see this red? A little bit of a roll oscillation, but a big pitch oscillation on these very aggressive manoeuvres. And this is, it, it's, is it bad? Ideally, you know, ideally you wouldn't have this. You can dial this down and, and tune it out to get a softer tune. But also what I found on the Camaro with these sort of long range builds is actually pitch is quite hard to tune 
well but just because of the shape of the copter so although it kind of looks like this in flight it feels really pretty good um, so the other thing you want to notice here though is that it's one thing responding with oscillations to very sharp aggressive maneuvers it's a totally different thing if this is just going on all the time so um, if we dial back out so we, we're still flying here and if we look here you can see that these values are really very low 0.05 and so there's some oscillations going on here as well but this is what we're looking for this generally means that the noise where there is noise is generated by um, the, the, the sort of copter maneuver itself rather than something inherent because there's too much vibration coming through so this is sort of a good sign um, Whereas with a very poor tune, you'll basically see this kind of sea of grass <laughs> here going up. And um, yeah, it, it, it's, uh, uh, you just got to watch for that. So that's a good way if you want to look at the log for evaluating your tune. Um, and then, you know, these very tight tunes, you can get into these oscillations as well. So you just have to, to, to look for that and, and sort of uh, um, depends what you want out of it. So obviously what you don't want is to oscillate away and, and lose control. But uh, um, sometimes the uh, sort of effective, um, uh, the effective tune that you want, maybe it's a bit on the edge, certainly is with mine. Uh, OK, so that's really all I wanted to say about autotune. I can't stress enough how well you need to set up the filters and the notch filtering in particular using BD Shot for preference, notch per motor. Um, I might just, let me just switch back to the other pane and we can see here. Okay, so just notch per motor, just little thing to watch for so INS H notch is what we call multi-source now so it's this uh, um, in the ops you can see the ops value here so it's it's the value 2 so so again this is a bit mass so we've got uh, three options here, hit set here we've got the value 16 plus 2 plus 4 which gives you 22 the value 2 gives you um, a notch per motor. Value four means that the notch, the, the way the notch tracks the frequencies, it's updated at the same rate as the loop rate is running. By default, it's 200 hertz. And then the value 16, it means you use the triple notch, which sort of gives a heavier amount of uh, filtering. So you've got to set up that. So I see this, this notch per motor often missed out, and this is a big, part of why tunes are not so great in anything other than sort of heavy uh, um, uh, sort of uh, hovers so make sure you set up the um, uh, filters right make sure you don't over tune the vehicle but I, I I use auto tune all the time I mean I'm constantly auto tuning my uh, copters because it's very quick and convenient and it does a really good job um, I think uh, uh, Michelle said uh, that I spent ages setting up this this copter and that is true but a lot of that ages was actually making code changes and uh, now those code changes are all in the actual tune so I was able to retune the cam camera really from scratch uh, on 4.4 it, it's you know it's it's a matter of I don't know 15 20 minutes it's not it's not a big deal and as long as you sort of approach it methodically you can get a really really good tune without having to do lots of I, I kind of although manual tuning might give you the best thing I'm kind of loath to do that because I'm only gonna have to retune it all again because of something I got wrong and all the rest of it so anyway so I highly recommend Autotune for Copters and uh, give it a go, see how you get on and thanks for watching.